uh, I guess we'll go ahead and get started here. We uh, got one of our, our all-time all-time great players here in Danielle Green with us. Uh, so, Danielle, if you could just uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what you've had going on here, what, what you're up to these days. Oh, these days I'm just uh, I'm in dental school. I go to Midwestern University. Um, since I graduated uh, Oklahoma State in 2008, I played uh, basketball overseas for Italy, Nigeria, and Angola. Um, won about won three championships there um, uh, for in Angola, and uh, yeah. So right now, these days, I'm just studying dentistry. Um, this is my going into my second year. I just learned I passed the boards on Saturday, the first board part of the board, which is uh, National Board of Dentistry Examination. So I'm really excited about that. <laughs> but that's all I've been up to, um, just watching WNBA, watching your feed on Facebook, local the state news. It's really fun. It's exciting. I'm glad to be talking to you guys. So what? Uh, how did you decide to get into the uh... – to become a dentist and go that go that route, and where where do you want to go whenever you're done with school? What do you want to What do you want this to turn into? Um, I decided I'm a dentist. Uh, I never even thought I could be. It never really entered my mind <laughs> dentistry or anything medical related. But uh, I was in Africa um, playing basketball. I played there for three years, um, and. I loved it. I loved playing. Um, I love the people there. And I just wanted to do something more. I love playing basketball. You wake up. It's like a dream come true, <laughs> kind of. Uh, you just wake up and you go play basketball four hours a day and you come home. But I just want to do more for people. Um, so I decided to get into the dentistry business because I could do that anywhere in the world, and I had a chance to own my own business to do things the way I wanted to do it, um, and I felt I could make a difference. So um, I started looking at things and just Googling um, <laughs> different professions, nursing, a doctor, and all that, and um, I realized that I could do it because I – I was asked to play for the Olympic team, um, the Angola Olympic team in 2012. This is the first time they ever went, the country ever went. Um, we just got finished winning our second uh, African national championship. And I thought I would, I never thought it was that good. I just worked hard and I played hard and I tried to motivate my teammates. And I really love my teammates, whoever I play with. And I just realized, like, Hard work, you can pretty much do anything, and we kind of got that from, you know, the Big 12. You know, we were 0-12 and the year before we came and um, made that push to the um, tournament. And I just felt like, you know, all these circumstances came about just because of hard work and people who believed um, initially being Coach Becky and Coach Cerner and that core group of coaches. So I feel like um, – you know, I could do anything. So I just started Googling things, and I found out dentistry was what I wanted to do. I could treat people, and I could um, help people smile and make them feel better about themselves, help them feel better about themselves. And uh, So I spent the last three years uh, before I – I left basketball 2012, um, and then I went to U of A, did my post back there, took all of my science courses, and then I went to um, – applied to school and got in uh, to nine schools, and I chose Ms. Midwestern University to go to. Sorry that was long-winded. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. Tell me a little bit uh, more about you are one of the first players that came in for Coach Budke, Coach Littell, Coach Cerner, that whole crew, whenever they got here. You're one of the first signees. What, what do you uh, recall about coming in and being a building block and helping get this program back up on its feet? I was initially, um, it just makes me so happy when I think about that time um, and sad at the same time thinking about now. Um, it was a dream come true as far as what you hope to accomplish it, it, as an athlete. Like, they had a dream when I initially came there. People thought we were crazy. Me, us being, um, Brisa and Rashi, Maria Cordero, um, 
both came out of just from junior college just because we weren't winning initially and we believed in them. We believed in the coaches. We believed in the P- the other or teammates over. They definitely came and welcomed us with open arms. Taylor Hardeman, uh, Christian Hood, Destiny Sykes, those seniors and uh who just welcomed us with open arms instead of being jealous and that was the key to our success. Um, that love and that excitement, people like you and um, Agatha Adams, those people who were there, um, just came in and loved us. And uh, we were building something special. And when you be- and you know how the core people believe in you, um, that was the initiation. That was the start of it all. And um, it was a blast. I remember our first game we lost. We got crushed by Texas Tech in the Big 12. It was so bad. And it was in front of so many people. And we felt that hostility and the level that we had to play at. It was huge. And it was overwhelming. And I had zero points and 10 rebounds. <laughs> I'll never forget Coach Bucky. <laughs> he looked at me like the first thing he said was, Jimmy, that can never happen again. <laughs> and um, it was just, you know, all of us were learning, you know, and, you know, Coach Bucky and Coach Littell, they were very humble coaches and Coach Cerna, and, um They were very humble. They won, even once, like, apologized to us for, like, mishandling the situation just with the coaching. And they were, and that to us, you know, we felt like we were a team, you know what I'm saying? And um, that's basically the best I can describe it. It was motivating. And us initially going 6-6 six and six the first year and then, I don't remember our second our record the second year, but making it to the Sweet 16 my senior year, it was unbelievable. And no matter what happens in life, we don't talk every day, but you always feel that um, that connection with the the people that I play with because you don't go through that you know without you know without connections. I hope I answered your question. Really it sure sure. did. And it's funny that you brought up that Texas Tech game because I remember you coming out of the locker room and looking right at me and said, that can't happen again. And I knew we had a change in attitude that we had some, some players that wanted to win. Uh, and, I, and that's not – we don't want to focus on that game, but that may have been a turning point. But looking back – It was. Well, looking back <laughs> on your time here, we, we won a lot of games during your time here. Was there a certain game – or a win that stood out that you that you reflect back on and think about quite a bit from your time here? Um, yes. Uh it was during it was against Oklahoma. I don't remember the year you'd be the professional in that area. <laughs> but um it was against Oklahoma. Um honestly I don't I it was, I think it was like my senior year. I remember the year before uh they had, you know, of course both pair of sisters and the two shooters and they had literally a complete team, and the gym was filled to the T. We were just getting to that point where, you know, people were starting to believe we were good, and those faithful fans, those fans who came at the beginning, and there was like 30 people, I don't know, like 200 people in the seats. How much did Oklahoma State hold? I don't know, but, um, and it would always come, and it was filled that day. It was so filled, the I mean, first time, or the second time, First time we were there, Oklahoma State playing against Oklahoma, and we lost handily, and I didn't play that well. And it was just nerve wracking and exciting. And um, I remember that our senior year, it was pulled to the T, and we just knew. Like, we had the perfect game plan because the tell was lucky. So, they came out with the perfect, because Ricky, because Erickson, because they came out with the perfect game plan, and we knew it was going to be, and we. We worked on it. Um, we had some great men's basketball players. Jeff was playing with us every day, practicing with us, um, being Courtney Paris, and we knew we were going to win that game. And it was because of the work ethic, uh, the coaching staff, beautiful plan, and just the fans came. It was like, it was amazing. I think we broke a record that year, that game, right? The most fans and coming women's basketball game in Oklahoma in uh, Oklahoma this year. I don't know. Um, he was a professional on that, but that was the best game. That was the most exciting. Uh, Dre went off. Uh, everyone did their part. Uh, Megan went off. Now Robin <laughs> now <laughs> um, at uh, Tulsa. She's coaching there. But, uh, yeah, she went off. She did her part. Everyone did their job. Mario Cadero, everyone, Taylor Hardeman, everyone did their job. It was beautiful. It was, that was the one that stood out the most, and I'll never forget. 
Looking back on your time at OSU outside of basketball, or I guess it could include basketball, what were uh, some of your favorite memories of just your time in Stillwater? Um, definitely the before game moments. Um, there's some in the camps, I think, as well as walking around campus. Um, the people there really love Oklahoma State and Stillwater. I felt that initially when I came, it was us still water against the world, kind of. And we had that chip on our shoulder from the basketball. And this basketball was always great. Our wrestling team was always great. Um, uh, you know, soccer, I'm not sure if they were always great, but they were coming. They were really good. At, we loved going to play. And, but women's basketball was special just because we were definitely not the favorites. And we hadn't been for a long time. Um, so I felt a lot of love there. We were a huge family, no matter where we went. Um, you know, it wasn't – I didn't feel like a stranger anywhere I went. I had no family there. A lot of us didn't. Um, weren't from Oklahoma, Maria Kadero, me, um, Brisa, Rashi, Rashi's Africa, from uh, Mayor of California. And we were all – we felt – we never felt like we were strangers. Someone always picked us up from Stillwater, Cushing, um, Oklahoma, everywhere we went. So that was my favorite. Um, feeling like something special, like we were doing something big together. It wasn't just us, um, 13, 14, I don't know how many people, uh, 30 people or on the team. It was everyone was in it with us and excited about it. And that was my favorite part. And before the game, just being able to just make connections with people in the position that we were in, being athletes on the floor and coaching and just making connections with the fans and the kids. Um, I remember I get email, I get letters all the time on my Facebook page. Not letters, but <laughs> I'm getting older too. <laughs> like uh, mess inbox messages. Those are my favorite part. And their kids and they're in college, getting 4.0s from high school, going and playing college basketball. And that's the message we wanted to send. And that's why I hope to send as a dentist. I played p- professional basketball and. Just knowing that you can do anything, and this doesn't stop at athletics, um, because and they were and people outside of the. This is going a little beyond your question, but just people beyond the world respect sports and winning and the culture of. Uh, um, and they respect it, and going outside, and that's what I hope to get across too at the dentist, and uh, just knowing you can do anything because we've already done it with basketball. So that's what I like best about it there. And that's I hope that answers your question. But the uh, last question for it's kind of a two part question. Mm-hmm. Um, first part: Do you how much do you get to follow the program, and, and how proud are you? Uh, second part is how how proud are you of the, the coach Latell and everybody? They have maintained success here and really been able to build on what you and, and some of those other players that you talked about when you guys came in and started. Just how how proud are you of the program, and how much do you get to keep up with it? Um, overseas, and I looked on, like, Google, or I want to say a constantly website. I didn't get to see a lot of games because of just, I, there was just no way, really. <laughs> um, but I, I do, um, look on the website now and then, and, uh, first of all, I'm so proud of you know, Oklahoma State. I think it's so funny when you look at my resume when I applied to these schools. <laughs> it says, like, you know, um, 316 Oklahoma State, you know, and um, it's funny it's all about basketball. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm proud, and they know Oklahoma State. You know, they know the women's basketball program is great. So it's affecting us long after we're done. When we say we're from Oklahoma State, it's like, wow, you play Oklahoma State? And they're continuing that. To continue that with what we lost um, is incredible. Am I surprised? No. Um, the head the leader, um, you know, Coach Hotel and uh, the amazing group of people that are there, I'm not surprised at all. And the fact that, you know, those players, I met some of those players. Um, I know some of those players in the WNBA. I, I go see them play um, whenever I can. Um, to support them, um, Tiffany Bias was at uh, Phoenix, and I live here, so she's not there anymore now. But I did go see her play like every time I could um, to support her. I um, and I'm just so proud of them. 
uh, and what they're continuing to do with that program. And it's incredible. And uh, I watched them this year, um, streaming at the TV, of course. And I was still proud of how hard they played. Win or lose, you're gonna you're gonna fight, go down fighting. You 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 win or lose, that's what you're gonna you're gonna remember. Them. Like, and that's what I'm proud of, and that integrity and the good people I still see there, and continuing to come through the program, um, creating good people and uh, incredible fighters in life. So I'm so proud to be from there, and to say that I'm from there, I brag every second I get. Um, Every second I can. So, D Green, you're still an all star like you were when you were here. You're off the hot seat with us, and uh, <laughs> I just want you to know that you have set the bar very high for everybody that we do one of these with from now on because you uh, you absolutely owned it. Thanks for taking the time with us. Thank you, um, thank you for thinking of me. I really love you guys. I, I know we don't talk a lot, but. Anytime, um, I'll do anything for you guys. And uh, uh, stay fighting, Ryan. We're so proud of you and Jeff and all of you that you do for the sports program there. Um, you made it special. And I just want to just say every time, like, I do a reverse layup, I think about you. Not that high off the ground anymore, but um, <laughs> um, thank you for making it special for us. And uh, and we really appreciate what you guys do. And much love from from, from here. Well, we appreciate that, and we thank you for taking the time. Yeah, no problem. Take care.